Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and welcome to my channel where I discuss all things related to financial services, their products, compensation plans, IMO comparisons, and the standard is where I need to supply you third-party documentation to back up my opinion and my rhetoric. That way you can decide what's best for you in your career. So now some of you are saying, Steve, what are you dressed so casual for today on the video? Well, first of all, it's Casual Fridays because this is Five Minute Fridays where I answer your emails live. The second reason is I had to wear this t-shirt that was sent to me by a big shout out to Mark Feller who sent me this shirt that says 10X on it. And on the back it says 24-7-365-10X, right? Sent one to me and sent one to Angela. So Mark, thank you very much for the t-shirt. Appreciate it. And I'm wearing it as you can tell, right? So that's why I'm dressed up so casually today. But again, this is, i uh, got my emails here. We're going to continue to do this series on where I answer your emails that you sent me. And Bob sent me an email. Actually, I get this question probably about 25 or 30 times a week where people are trying to balance. It seems that everybody keeps swirling around this one decision, which I'm not quite sure why, except maybe they're running a ton of ads and confusing a lot of people. So I thought I would cover that email today and see if we can resolve the issue is uh, why should I sign with a final expense only IMO or should I go with a mortgage section IMO? To me, it's a very simple question, but again, I get it 20, 25 times a week. The reason why I think that is, is because people confuse mortgage section and final expense as being a product, not a solution, right? It's all life insurance. It just depends on what kind of conversation you're gonna have with your prospect and what they qualify for. They may want mortgage protection, but only qualify for a final expense solution, not policy. So I thought we would dive in that today. There isn't really a final expense product or a mortgage protection product. They're all life insurance products used to solve a need. So let's talk about these two. So you have a basic understanding and the rest probably will make sense from that point forward. Okay, so let's start with what is a mortgage protection policy? Mortgage protection is nothing more than a non-medical, simplified issue life insurance policy. It's designed and marketed to pay off a mortgage in the event of death, right? We all understand that. So the underwriting in mortgage protection is more liberal than a typical life insurance with some carriers, but it usually is a term life insurance policy and usually level term coverage, 10, 15, 20, and 30 year periods. It also has riders such as uh, disability income uh, that's available for mortgage protection, uh, return of premium, and living benefits such as critical illness, right? What it's not, it's not credit life offered by the banks like in the past. It's not decreasing term, which is level premium, but the death benefit decreases. That's what we sell against. It's what the bank offers or used to offer. Lastly, it's not PMI. It's also not private mortgage protection insurance, right? So what is final expense? Again, it's simplified issue, whole life. Means you can be paying for it for your whole life. The reason why we call it final expense is it's usually a lower face amount, lower death benefit, and it's gonna be there for your whole life. That's why they call it whole life life insurance. And that's why they call term, term. It's going to term out. It won't be there for your whole life. And that's why it gets nicknamed as final expense because it's going to be there when they die. It's a whole life life insurance policy, simplified issue, right? And sometimes much more liberal underwriting policies. And it will accept previous maybe heart conditions, cancer, insulin, diabetics, whatever. There are usually three types of policies that are available. One is a level death benefit. Two is what we call a graded policy. Now graded means if they die in the first two years, they're only going to get the premium that they paid in plus 10% interest on their money. That's it. They live beyond the two years, they get the full death benefit in the event that they pass away. And also they have return of premium or a modified policy. Now some carriers are going to want to do a phone interview in the home while you're still with the client, right? And it's usually sold to applicants between the age of 45 to 85 with a maximum death benefit or face amount, usually under 50,000. So now that we know what a mortgage station or a final expense solution is, right? And what it is not, you can see that your job really is, again, as an agent, to provide the options your clients qualify for, which may or may not be what they wanted to begin with if they're working the lead pro stuff. If you're working the lead program, they may have filled out something that they wanted full coverage mortgage protection. 
but they don't know the industry, you and I do, and that's why they rely on our expertise to go in there and show them three or four available options to them given their medical, their age, and their budget. Here's my point. They may want mortgage session, but based on their age, medical conditions, and budget, they can't afford mortgage session or qualify for it. So you present them the options that will help them cover maybe some of the mortgage and some of their final expenses. So you go in there and you present options that will help them cover maybe some of their mortgage and some final expense. Partial coverage, but not full coverage. Some coverage is better than no coverage. And that's your job, to help them understand that. As an agent, we're looking to provide options and not walk away from being able to help everyone, right? I mean, we're in their home. We want to be able to help as many people as we possibly can and not walk away from being able to protect them and not walk away from making a sale, right? So why would you want to limit your market? The more products and the carriers that you can write and the more people that you can help determines how much money you can earn in this industry. So let's take a look at the difference between the final expense market and the mortgage section market. To sell only final expense with a final expense only IMO limits yourself to a much smaller market and also lower income potential. And here's why. The average annual premium for final expense is $200. So you're writing a lot of 15 to $25 a month policies, right? In mortgage protection, the average is over $1,000, $1,080 to be exact. And this number really hasn't changed in years. That's five times the average sale in final expense. Doesn't mean you shouldn't help those people, but what it does mean is that you're working five times as hard, number one, and you're limiting your market in terms of future business, right? These folks tend to be older and limit your ability for future sales. Also, if you're working a lead program, most of these leads are generated or targeted to a lower income market. So that's something else you might want to consider. So Bob, to answer your question, my recommendation is to sign with an IMO that offers all types of financial products in mortgage session, final expense, IUL, and annuities. And if you're with an IMO that owns their own milling house and has a quality lead program, Working mortgage session leads, you will sell a ton of final expense and mortgage session and have the chance to also provide IULs and annuities. As long as, again, you're with the right IMO. And as I always recommend, getting with a coach that owns their own agency and that agency provides you a comprehensive training program and is with you case by case, day by day, paint by the numbers, right, to help you with booking appointments selecting products, learning how to present in the home, and is willing to help you in the home when you're sitting kneecap to kneecap, face to face with those clients. That's where you make your money, and that's where most people end up making a mistake. That is a critical part of your success, is being able to go into a home. First of all, it's a fear factor, right? You're going in the home feeling you're not quite ready, right? and you don't have anybody to help you once you go behind those closed doors, that's why we're always manning the phones to help our agents at all times, before, during, and after the sale. Many times we're on the phone with the agent on speakerphone answering the client's question. That's what you're looking for, the whole package, not just somebody's gonna sign you up and throw you in a couple of videos and then tell you, go, 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 right? You want someone that's actually a partner not someone just signing you up. Now, the next thing you want help with, obviously, is selecting their products, right? Learning how to present in the home. To me, that is what I see after talking to thousands and thousands of people. That's the difference maker in Asian success, is someone that can teach them the phone script, help them with product selection, help them in the home, and then help them process their pending. So Bob, I hope that helps you with your decision making, but let me give you some bullet points. If you're looking to find an IMO, they have to own their own direct mail house for lead generation, not just buying from third party lead sellers, right? Because they can't control the quality of the leads. They have to have technology you can run your business on, no charge. No duplicated, redated, recycled leads. That requires technology to remove that lead when the sale has been made. No recruiting required for advancement. No recruiting required for advancement, okay? No cap on my income if I don't recruit. I want to go to a street level 100, 110% contract based only on one thing, which is not based on my education, my skin color, my clothing, or the car I drive, only on the production, the quality, and the quantity, the premium that I bring to the IMO. If I want to build an agency, allow me to do so, 
but I want to get paid when I'm worth based on my own production. No membership fees to have to sign up for in order to get promoted. And I want a home office staff that's there and available to help me if I need it. And then again, there's that agency and that coach that's gonna help you all along the way that's with the right IMO. So I hope this video was valuable to you. How to get past that decision. Do I go with a final expense only IMO or do I go with an IMO that has all the options and I'm able to help my clients? Because as brokers, we want to have, we want to have the right product for that client. Otherwise, we'd be a captive agent selling only what they allow us to sell. Don't put yourself in that situation. As I close this video out, as I always say, the surest way to succeed is to be determined never to quit. You gotta fail, because that's how we learn as human beings. If you quit, you're quitting on yourself. As the video ends, do all those things the YouTubers love you to do, which is like the video, share it out to as many people as you can, comment on it, Hit the subscribe button if you're brand new and mash that bell down the lower hand side over here somewhere and you'll get instant notifications. And let me remind you to send in more emails so I have more things to talk about and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye now.